Well, we're building up towards the first race, which will be underway at nine o'clock, fingers crossed. I must say, looking at the track, uh, it's slightly concerning that the first race is going to be for single-seater cars, the uh, second of the weekend's classic Formula 3 races. So if it's going to be the two-by-two two start, that means that Christian Olsen and Ian Jacobs will be side-by-side side at the front. Uh, Andy Smith, as we explained, number 78, Andrew Smith, uh, he was on pole position for yesterday's race, but unfortunately, he, he, he did something that is rather unusual for Andrew. He had a spin uh, on the first lap, and that dropped him some way down the order, and he had to claw his way back. And in the end, he got made it back up to uh, finishing third place, uh, just ahead of former champion Simon Jackson. Uh, Adrian Langridge, as I say, leads the uh, British Championship at the moment. He's, in fact, he's won all three rounds that have been so far of the British Championship in the Hewland car, a car once raced in the British Formula 3 Championship by William Hewland of Hewland Gearbox fame. So we've got some famous cars in this, and what's nice that more and more the drivers are being encouraged to bring the cars out in the original period liveries that they ran in, uh, so the cars, like in historic Formula 1, that we'll be seeing later on. Uh, there we've got the number eight car, that's the uh, car now driven by David Thorburn, but uh, has been totally restored a few years ago. Uh, the car that was used by Martin Brundle for Eddie Jordan Racing in the 1983 Championship when he ran and sent a very close championship going down to the final round that year. Uh, 214 then, Christian Olsen, uh, an experienced professional driver. He races in sports car racing as well, the European Le Mans series and so on. Uh, so he probably has that advantage as well. Ian Jacobs has raced for many, many years in all kinds of categories, normally in a car that's painted a rather lurid green colour, somewhat similar colour to the marshals' boxes and huts that we have around the circuit. Uh, but that's not the colour of the car he's uh, driving today and yesterday. So Ian Jacobs uh, in the number nine car, one of the Volkswagen powered cars, and a couple of drivers which uh, we were expecting to see at the back. One is there, one isn't. I'm afraid Anthony Hancock isn't there. Not surprisingly, had an uh, incident yesterday. But Frédéric Rouvier, the French uh, championship leader, I believe, uh, he's starting 31st on the grid because uh, he had a moment yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, he went off, yes. Yeah. So Frédéric Rouvier, uh, yes, starting at the back of the grid, uh, is the dominant leader of the French championship. In fact, I think it could always be said uh, that he's actually won it already. Uh, but yesterday, well, it is a round of the French Championship, uh, but he can count that as one of his drop scores, uh, and uh, he'll still be way ahead of anybody else. So uh, well, he's a car to watch. Number 59, Frederick Rouvier, coming through from uh, the back of the He has a Toyota engine in the back of his Martini, the French cars. So here we go then, the side-by-side uh, -side start, as you can see, as the cars make their way through Club Corner, and 20 minutes of racing gets underway as they accelerate up towards Abbey, looking for the driest parts of the circuit. Is it going to be Christian Olsen or is it going to be Ian Jacobs who gets into Abbey first? They're almost level and Ian Jacobs tries to stick with Christian Olsen on the outside but doesn't quite succeed in doing so. In third place, a little more cautiously there, Andrew Smith. But it is grid order at the moment for the first three, Olsen, Jacobs and Smith, Alistair. Uh, just a massive spray behind those first few cars. Uh, a 2-1-4, yes, Christian Olsen leads and uh, in second place, it is Ian Jacobs. They've got a reasonably clear run. Then in third place, it was Andrew Smith, but he's run slightly wide at the loop, and that's let through uh, just the one car, actually, that's got through, which is number 80, Valerie Leone. Uh, so not too many places lost, but he's in amongst the battle for fifth place now, Andrew Smith. Yeah, it was a slightly bold move, that by Andrew. I think he was going to work, but uh, I think he's going to repeat the attempt. In fact, he's closing up now in fourth place on Valerio Leone in a car once raced by a driver who went on to become a Grand Prix driver, Teo Fabi. And he is uh, just ahead, uh, you can see there, of Adrian Langridge in the Hewland blue and yellow car. So the car's now streaming out of Luffield through Woodcote Corner. And we'll pick up when the timing screen gives us the positions at the end of the first lap because it's very difficult in the spray to make out one from another. But how many places, for example, uh, Frederick Rouvier has been able to make up? There you see the Adrian Langridge car, number 50. But I can't, because I can't see how many cars are ahead of him, but Adrian, uh, certainly Adrian Langridge is well placed. Lead us back uh, through uh, Beckett's with you, Alistair. Indeed they are, yes. Uh, and the order remains the same with Andrew Smith still in fourth place. In fifth place, it's number 11, Simon Jackson. And uh, behind Simon Jackson is Adrian Langridge. And then number two, Eric Martin. 
and uh, completing that group, Andrew Haddon, number 12, who's come up from uh, 12th on the grid. We are attempting to find out where Frederick Rouvier is. But I wouldn't we... worry too much. <laughs> by, by the time they get to the end of the lap, it'll be on the timing screen yes, anyway. Indeed, but yes. The uh, leader then, uh, coming through Stoke Corner into Vale, Christian Olsen in the lead, and I suspect, unless he makes a mistake, this is where he's going to stay after yesterday's drive in conditions that were wet, but they weren't anything like as wet as a, a wet track, but it was nothing like as wet as this is now. The leaders coming out of club and has already opened up quite a large margin. Christian Olsen completing the first lap well in front of Ian Jacobs, 2.3 seconds ahead. It's Valeria Leone in third place. Uh, in Simon Jackson, number 11, in fourth place. Adrian Language is fifth. Eric Martin is sixth. Andrew Haddon is seventh. Joe Colosacco, number six, is eighth. Ninth is David Thorburn, number eight. In tenth place is number 82, David Cosanel. Behind him, we've got uh, Valeria Leone's son, Davide Leone, number 81, in eleventh place. Uh, and then we've got, it's not son, but father, uh, Tom Olsen. Uh, ahead now one or two cars I think are running without transponders yes number 78 uh, is actually in fourth place ahead of uh, Simon Jackson so Andrew Smith in fourth place number 78 but with a transponder problem which means he didn't come up on the screen now Frederick Rouvier uh, is in already up into 14th place from 33rd on the grid that's impressive uh, that is very impressive in this spray isn't it he must have well he's passed that many cars and every one is just a ball of spray in front of him uh, all the cars through the tight section of the track in front of me here, OK. I mean, that is quite remarkable. Rubier, yes, all right, he's a dominant leader of the championship, so obviously he's very good. Uh, but on a circuit that he won't have raced on, I don't think, before yesterday, Frederick Rubier to come through from right at the back of the grid to be 14th, as Anderson says, in all this spray. That is a tremendous effort. Uh, and at that rate of progress, although obviously he's going to come up against quicker drivers now, he could be a candidate for the podium even. There you see number 11 on the screen, that is uh, Simon Jackson's Chevron, with, you won, with which he won the French Championship two years ago. And I would imagine that out front, Christian Olsen is just uh, stretching his advantage. There's Adrian Language in the Hewland car. Leaders on to Hangar Straight. And I think there's going to be a challenge in a moment for second place being mounted by Valerio Leone. And Andrew Smith being passed by Adrian Langridge with Simon Jackson right behind him. So uh, Andrew Smith dropping back a little, but Leone making a challenge for second place, making a bid for second place as the cars come towards the end of the second lap. It's a 20 minute race, of which we still have 15 minutes for things to sort themselves out. Olsen then comes out, and Christian Olsen comes out of. Club corner for the second time, and he's leading by 2.99 seconds this time. Andrew, yeah, just a bit more on Christian Olsen. He's 22 years old, uh, the Danish driver, but he usually drives for British teams. In fact, this season in uh, European Le Mans season, uh, season he's driving for uh, our old friend Mike Smith, the BRDC member of the L RLR team. Although last year, in fact, he had five wins with uh, Colin Noble in the Acura Cos. Uh, Nielsen Racing Team, so uh, he, he certainly can speak English pretty well, as most Danes can, of course. Yes. But yeah, he normally drives for, for for English teams in the LMP Championship. But he's hoping to obviously move up to LMP2 in the future. So his level of, uh, although he may be young, his level of experience is, is quite considerable. Yeah, he's been he's been racing karting since yeah. he was uh, nine, ten years old. Yes. Yeah. So. Not surprising, but I mean, Ian Jacobs wouldn't claim to be a professional driver, but he just enjoys his racing and goes about it very seriously. And he, at the moment, is leading across the French Championship uh, section of the race, because Christian Olsen races in the British Championship section. Uh, Adrian Language has come up into fourth place now in the Hewland car, number 50, ahead of Andrew Smith. And then in sixth place is uh, Simon Jackson. Eric Martin is seventh. Andrew Hatton, number 12, is eighth. Joe Colosacco is ninth. And David Thorburn is tenth. And uh, on that lap, Frederick Rouvier only gained one place, so he's done all the place gaining that's easy-ish. Nothing's different easy in these conditions. Uh, and he's now third, well, was 13th at the start of this third lap. Yes, he was coming up behind a, a group of cars, so he may take a couple of places if he can get past. But as you say, yes, he's caught the quicker cars now at the back of the, uh, the leading train that's coming through Beckett's at the moment. Uh, and he's right at the back of that. Uh, so uh, 
if he can find a way past, he will, will should start to pick off a few more places. And in fact, he's making an effort on the exit of Beckett's towards Chapel to get past uh, the second of the Leones, that's David Leone. So Christian Olsen then coming through the end of lap three. And Ian Jacobs fight, fighting off, still successfully fighting off uh, Valeria Leone, who's one of the stalwarts of this series, been uh, doing it for many, many years, former champion. And so three laps now completed by young Olsen. And Ian Jacobs seems to have the measure of Valeria Leone for the moment, certainly over the line this time. His rival isn't as close as he was. And then quite a gap back to Adrian Langridge in fourth place. Simon Jackson in fifth place. Andrew Smith dropping back and falling into the clutches of the number two car of Eric Martin. Andrew Haddon still eighth, Joe Colosacco ninth. And uh, on that lap, Frederick Rouvier may have gained some ground on those ahead, but he's not past anybody. So number 59, Frederick Rouvier, still 13th. Yes, and he's uh, still trying to get past David Leone. He's uh, looking for the inside at the loop. And uh, two further cars just in front of Leone. So uh, he's got a lot of spray now coming up into his face, but they come through and uh, a spin on the exit of uh, Aintree. A very quick spin there in front of three other cars. Uh, nasty moment there for number eight, David Thorburn, I'm afraid. And that's the, uh, is that the Brundle car? Yes. David? Yes, I thought it was. Uh, and he, uh, very quickly selected first gear and moved off again, so I don't think he lost more than those three places. Nice little battle building up here between, this is for fourth place, Adrian Language in the march and Simon Jackson uh, in the Chevron. Simon Jackson, vastly experienced driver. He's got two very quick sons as well, Cameron and Dominic Jackson. And Simon goes to the inside line into Cop's corner, doesn't quite make it though, but he may be challenging again as they go up towards Maggots and Beckett's. Uh, yes, Chevron against March, yep. Yeah, coming up alongside into Maggots, and uh, they're absolutely side by side, but uh, he has to give best to Adrian Langridge as they turn into the right-hander at Beckett's. And uh, through the left-handed element, obviously, it's uh, Linus turn through there, but uh, he'll no doubt have another try down the hangar straight. Yes, he lost a little bit of ground going through Beckett's compared with uh, Adrian Langridge, but nonetheless, he's getting closer again as they come onto the straight. There's a slower car that needs to be lapped already that's uh, right down at the tail end of the field. I think I know which one it is, but we'll spare the blushes. Uh, oh, down on the inside goes Simon Jackson of uh, Adrian Langridge. Adrian Langridge sticks on the outside line. They're side by side as they go through the corner, through Snow Corner, that is, into Vale. And the march gets back ahead, but Simon Jackson's coming back at him as they go into the beginning of club, the left-handed part of club. They're side by side into the corner, and they make contact relatively light contact, but uh, there was certainly a little bit of contact there. I don't think it's done damage to either car. Uh, and it's still the march just ahead of the Chevron as they come out of uh, Club Corner to complete their fourth lap. Uh, and uh, Christian Olsen leading now by 2.899 seconds. So the lap time's virtually the same, but Ian Jacobs actually slightly the quicker, so he now has the fastest lap of the race. Uh, so through they come back towards you for fourth place. Still yes. language ahead of Jackson. Out of uh, farm up towards village and uh, Jackson doesn't make an attempt on the inside. In fact, Langridge has pulled out a decent gap over the uh, number two car, uh, number 11 car of Jackson as they come through the left hander. And once again, Jackson not quite as quick through there. So they go now through the quick entry left hander onto the. I think you've got somebody going the wrong way. Um, if you, there we are. Have you got that? That's uh, Leone, isn't it? Number 80. Oh, yeah, that was on the exit of Aintree. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, slightly outside of my vision at that point. Yeah, Valerio yeah. Leone it was, anyway. He's uh, got going lost. again. Yes, he's got going again. But number 80, who was in third place, that means this battle we're now seeing on screen is for third place rather than for fourth. Uh, and Valerio Leone coming on third, not like him. But uh, meanwhile, Simon Jackson now has another go as they come past the Heritage Pit side by side and behind them we've got number 50 which is uh, Adrian Langridge just coming out of Cops Corner now and Simon Jackson mounting another challenge the Chevron level with the march but not getting past it I don't think and I think they're being slowed up slightly but with this battle because uh, I think that Eric Martin might be coming a little bit closer as they go through Beckett's but once again uh, as you described last time Adrian Language a little bit quicker through Beckett's than Simon Jackson and yeah. Jackson loses ground 
Yeah, so Eric Marta in the Marlboro Liberated, Liberated Martini with the Alfa Romeo engine in it. Closing up on those cars. So we've now got a line of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars, really, in that line coming down Hangar Straight towards Stoke Corner. Ahead of them all are Christian Olsen and Ian Jacobs doing a tremendous uh, performance here. He's still got the fastest lap of the race. He's uh, 2.89 seconds behind the leader. And there you have uh, number two, Eric Martin, just behind Simon Jackson. So Eric Martin actually could be on course for the podium place as well. Sort of past the Chevron and the Marks before he's there. He's got the, the uh, Martini, the French Martini uh, chassis. Uh, and he nearly made it there, but not quite. Simon Jackson still holds him off as they come back into your sight. But it's not Simon challenging. Adrian Language anymore? No, absolutely not. Uh, the challenge on Jackson by Martin as they turn into the right hander at Village. And uh, <laughs> who's coming up behind? <laughs> but we've got uh, Haddon, Colasacco, Rouvier up there as well. Rouvier now has made it up yeah. to eighth place. Cosanel as well. And they're all bunching up behind the number 11 of Simon Jackson. So, a really good battle for that place. And of course, the, two, the front two cars uh, all on their own now that we've yeah. lost. Uh, Leone. Yeah, the gap between Ian Jacobs in second place and Adrian Language in third place, 12.3 seconds, so it's a huge gap. So we've got six of the got minutes to go, and Frederick Rouvier, as you say, now up into eighth place, so he, he, he sort of leaps a level and then began to gain some more places over the last uh, last lap. So uh, from the back of the grid, Frederick Rouvier now in eighth place behind Joe Colosacco's uh, Dallara. Now they are just going through Woodcut now. There's the Dallara number six with Frederick Rouvier behind him. And Adrian Langridge trying to find the best parts of the circuit. I mean, obviously on the line, it's beginning to get a little bit drier here, so we need to conserve his tyres, although I would have thought it's going to be wet enough to get the wet tyres through to the end without any real worries. Battle going, go third on. place comes up to Beckett, still led by Adrian Langridge, and uh, second in that group, Simon Jackson then Eric Martin and uh, Frederick Rouvier tries round the outside of Joe Colasacco at Beckett's and makes it, yeah. get passes him in the middle element of Beckett's. Great move there from Rouvier. Neat move that by Frederick Rouvier. So ahead of Joe Colasacco, puts him into seventh place. Andrew Hatton going nicely, number 12 ahead of him uh, in the Chevron B34. And down they come into Stowe Corner. So Frederick Rouvier could gain another place or two. Five and a half minutes remain. Leaders coming through to complete their sixth lap. Christian Olsen still ahead. But uh, Ian Jacobs just isn't giving up. He's uh, 2.6 now. He's got the gap down again. Another new fastest lap indication that the track is getting drier and drier on the racing line. It's still not what you'd call bone dry, but it's certainly getting less wet. Uh, and the lap times are showing it the way they're coming down for the first two. So Ian Jacobs a little bit closer to Christian Olsen, but not close enough to make a bid to take the place. Now, as for the next group, Adrian Langridge still ahead of Simon Jackson. Then Eric Martin's dropped back a little bit. Uh, behind Eric Martin, Andrew Hatton. And as we saw, Frederick Rubier now up into seventh place in the number 59 Martini, ahead of Joe Colosacco in the Dallara. Behind them is David Cosanel, number 82. And then 10th is number 80 after his spin. Dropping back to 10th place, Valerio Leone. And uh, uh, Frederick Rouvier went for a, a dive up the inside at the loop to get past uh, the uh, Simon, uh, Andrew Haddon car, and it worked out very badly for him because he ran wide and lost fur a further two places. So he's back to the back of that group again. But trying to work his way back towards... Uh, well, he's, got, he's, he's back behind the Dallara, as you say, of uh, Joe Colosacco. Well, I think that's the first hiccup he's had in his progress, but uh, anyway, he's dropped it back. There he is, number 59, the French, champ well, French Championship leader, Frederick Rouvier. That group of cars going through Woodcut Corner and onto the National Pits straight. And uh, that was a thank you, I think, there from Adrian Language. Obviously, he and Simon Jacks, both being British-based drivers, know each other well. And uh, a, a spin for Ian Jacobs exiting oh, Cops Corner. Oh. And I think he may just be able to stay ahead of the group for third place, but it's going to be a battle for second place now. Uh, Ian Jacobs has got up to speed again and uh, goes through Beckett's. Doesn't look to be any problem whatsoever with that car. We just caught the end of the spin. He must have spun right uh, just below the uh, crest of the hill coming out of Cops Corner. Right, we'll see whether we get a replay of that. But 
it looks as though it's cost him any chance he may have had of, of challenging Christian Olsen. But at the moment, the young Danish driver on course for a Silverstone Classic double. So he's still got the place, yes, as you suggested, Alistair, but uh, obviously nowhere near Christian Olsen now, who will be coming through in a moment to complete his... Well, he has now completed his seventh lap. Uh, time, these lap times for two more laps, yes. The, the lap he's just started, plus one more. And he's now totally on his own as he makes his way through Abbey. The cars that next come through are a lap behind. In fact, you've got the leader as only now coming up towards Abbey is the second place car. So Ian Jacobs is still second, but obviously way, way, way behind now. Adrian Language is third, fourth is Simon Jackson, fifth is Eric Martin, Andrew Hatton is sixth. Up to seventh has come number 82, so David Cousinel moving up into seventh place. Ahead with Frederic Rouvier, Joe Colosacco is ninth and tenth uh, is Valerio Leone. And uh, despite Frederic Rouvier's mistake at loop last time, he uh, had another go at the same move on uh, the uh, car ahead, which is the 82 car of Cossonel, and uh, it didn't run wide, he didn't go in so deep, so uh, he didn't gain or lose a place that time. Well, there's a lot of racing still going on for the final podium position. Ian Jacobs is staying uh, clear of it, but the challenge there by Simon Jackson on the inside, and uh, that was as they went into Brooklands. It's cost him some momentum, and he's got Eric Martin challenging him now, but he's uh, recovering his composure. Simon Jackson, very experienced racer, and retrieves his third place, which he briefly lost to number two, Eric Martin. So they're all going past the pits. The gap between first and second, 18 seconds, no less, 18 seconds between Christian Olsen and Ian Jacobs in second place. Ian Jacobs having been the only driver to get anywhere near the Dane. Dennis driver way out in front. And you've got the group of cars going past you now, Alistair, for we have, third yes. place. Uh, and it would be described as a battle for third again because Ian Jacobs has uh, pulled away after that spin, so he's safely in second. But the uh, battle for third now in the hands of Adrian Langridge, as it has been for a while. But uh, I noticed that Frederick Rouvier, uh, he's got past, I think, Cossonel down by you. And, uh, but hasn't managed to get past Haddon yet, so now, still on the charge. Somebody's on the grass. Uh, we'll pick out which one it is in a moment, but uh, he, he didn't have a spin. He managed to keep the guy under control on the rather slippery grass that would have been. So somebody has been displaced a place or two as a result of that moment, coming out of Chapel Curb onto Hangar Straight. And Christian Olsen goes through onto his last lap with about half a minute to spare in the 20 minutes. So Christian Olsen now on the last lap as the fight for third place comes through club corner. I think Ian Jacobs is going to be pretty secure in second place. The order behind him uh, is... That's another one going... Oh, that's a, a back marker keeping out of the way. The ex Rupert Keegan BA, BAF British Air Ferries car. Adrian Langridge then third. Uh, Simon Jackson is fourth. Eric Martin is fifth. Frederick Rubier is up to sixth place. This is sixth from 31st on the grid. Andrew Hatton is seventh. Joe Colosacco is ahead of David Cousinel for eighth place. Uh, and in 10th place is Valerio Leone. And Gaia Skin having a quiet race for the 2017 British champion in 11th place, number 20, ahead of Frederic Lajou, number 21, in 12th place. Uh, Frederic Rouvier have, had another go at the loop to get past Eric Martin that time, and uh, he went uh, tight in but came out slower, so he dropped back behind again. But Rouvier, you can't say he's giving up. He's uh, absolutely charging, but uh, very hard to get past the Martin car, I think, before in the last few corners of the race. But he will know all about Eric Martin because he's raced against him in the French Championship, so he may have a, a cunning plan that he can, uh, can put into effect to find a way up another place. Currently, he's sixth, then, the French Championship leader. Behind the British Championship leader, of course, Adrian Langridge, who's in third place. There's uh, two separate... I think we're going to have two separate podiums for this race, one for the French Championship, one for the, the uh, British Championship uh, competitors. So... Well on his way round his last lap, Andrew. Yeah, just wondering what this is doing for the French Championship positions with Rouvier. Obviously, uh, not scoring many points uh, this weekend. I wonder if that moves Ian Jacobs up into the lead of that no, championship. I, nothing I like got... Andrew. That, that uh, I'll tell right, you. Okay. Uh, Frederick Jacobs... Rouvier. 
Luke had 585 points before this weekend. That's a lot. Davide Leone had 384, so there's 200 points difference already. Oh, right. Rubier okay. has won so many races this year that he's just about won the championship anyway. Uh, whatever happens here. And uh, it, it, it looks very different, Ian, as they come down to Stoke, as Rubier got past two cars at Beckett's. Right. OK, so here's, here comes the winner, anyway, coming out of Club Corner, up to take the chequered flag. Uh, number 214, Christian Olsen wins his second uh, race of the weekend in the classic Formula 3 uh, races. Uh, eventually, after his spin, uh, we'll have uh, Ian Jacobs still finishing second place. Now, what's going to happen for third? Yeah, for, uh, he's got past Simon Jackson. Leving Martin gets past Simon Jackson as well. And so as they come up to the flag, uh, Adrian Langridge will hang on to third place. But a tremendous performance this has been by the French championship leader. Uh, and so Frederick uh, Rubier, after yesterday's disappointment, when he spun out, he finishes in fourth place. That's fourth place from 31st on the grid. A quite extraordinary drive that by, and perhaps showing why uh, he is the French Championship leader, a virtual champion. Uh, he got ahead of Eric Martin and Simon Jackson on the last lap. Uh, Andrew is with a very happy winner. I am just, uh, he's going to take his crash helmet off first so we can actually hear what he says. So that was an absolutely faultless drive, wasn't it, by the, yeah. the young man from Denmark. And the helmet is just about to come off. But what about uh, Ian? We know he celebrates nicely. He'll be jumping up and down on the podium, I'm sure. But the, uh, it's uh, just got a little bit of paraphernalia. Puts the, uh, puts the sound plug onto the top of his crash helmet. The crash helmet is off. It is in the cockpit. And it's got to turn around in a second because I haven't got his attention. Earplugs come out. That's a perfect drive, never made one mistake, and of course it was nice not to have any spray in front of you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in these conditions, the spray is always a key determining factor, especially in the first uh, quarter of the race where everyone's bunched up together. So the key is just to get through the corners um, in front of everyone else and let them deal with the spray. The conditions seem very similar to yesterday. I think your lap times are a little bit quicker towards the end. Um, yeah. I would say it's, there's more standing water on the circuit. Towards the end, the spray I kind of, um, uh, you know, removed a lot of the water from the racing line. So um, the grip was definitely uh, starting to increase towards the end. Uh, in the beginning, I would say it's quite treacherous. The thing is also there's quite a strong uh, wind. And as you can feel right now, there's back wind going into, um, into Cobb's corner. So that even though these aren't that aero dependent, it still makes a difference, especially in these conditions. Christian, obviously we know you've been racing in uh, LMP3 for RRR this year, yeah. uh, and last year, of course, you were very successful with the Curie Cost Nielsen team. Do you come into a weekend like this with a different mindset, or do you still come actually professional, absolutely professionally? I mean, I think I'm too competitive to uh, take a completely uh, relaxed approach, but uh, I still don't uh, forget that. Uh, number one, I'm here with my dad. I'm here to spend time with Slim Borgood, who's a good friend of ours, and to just uh, enjoy old cars, which is actually how I got into motor racing in the first place. And second of all, I wouldn't say they're as strong as a LMP3 cockpit, so it's always in the back of your mind a little bit. <laughs> Very interesting. Thanks for it. Your dad was about 12th, I think, actually. Well, that's good. That's an uh, improvement from yesterday. Yeah. Ian. Yes, thanks, Andrew. He's 15th, in fact, was uh, Father Olsen. Uh, so, uh, i say we'll have two podiums. The top three in the French Championship, Ian Jacobs uh, was the winner of that uh, from the remarkable Frédéric Rouvier. That was one of the drives of the weekend, I suggest, to get through th that number of cars in those conditions and finish fourth overall. That was a tremendous performance by Frédéric Rouvier. And third of the French drivers, uh, French Championship drivers, number two, Eric Martin, who finished in fifth place. And, and uh, Alan is ready with the podium. We certainly are, yeah. The podium, uh, the first podium of the day for Sunday. Race 13 of the weekend for the Silverstone Classic, everybody. And two podiums coming up, the French Championship and the UK Championship. The French Championship podium, first of all. Let's get the drivers onto the podium in reverse order, starting with third place, number two, Eric Martin. Congratulations, Eric. Yes, he says, and runs up to the third step of the podium. What a remarkable drive it was from the driver we've just heard from with Andy down in the pit lane. The French Championship leader, second place from the penultimate row of the grid, Frédéric Rouvier. In second place, he waves to the crowd and gets the cheers. And then to our winner, number nine, Ian Jacobs. Well done, Ian. 
absolutely delighted with his win as he takes the top step of the podium. And now the podium presentation to be made by Steph Crouch, representing the HSCC, who goes to the far end and congratulates Eric Martin. A busy race for him. A very busy race for Frederic Rouvier. From the 16th row of the grid, he takes second place. And then to our double winner this weekend, Ian Jacobs on the top step of the podium with his big Silverstone Classic winner's trophy and the garland around his neck as well. And let's get all the drivers together on the top step of the podium so they can pose for the cameras and smile away. We get a quick word with Ian Jacobs while they dress the podium for the UK Championship. That's our French Championship podium, everybody. Well done to all three of the drivers. They can come on now and uh, get the podium ready. Ian, great weekend. Yes, absolutely superb. We've had a really, really bad year. Uh, lots of errors, lots of mistakes, but this is awesome. And um, thank you everybody for coming, who've come to support me, and the marshals that are out there in this horrible weather. Good job, lads. It was a busy race, wasn't it? It was for me. Um, during the race, um, I got it wrong at Cops. I think I spun twice, maybe three times. Didn't we only heard about one. Uh, well, it was one spin, but three times in one go. So, uh, yeah. no, excellent, really good. Uh, well done, Ian. Many congratulations. That's our winner for the French Championship category uh, element of our first race of the day. And now on to the UK Championship. We get the drivers once again onto the podium in reverse order, starting with third place, number six, Joe Colosacco. Congratulations to Joe makes his way onto the third step of the podium at the far end, Joe, if you please. In second place, number 50, Adrian Langridge. Congratulations, Adrian. Makes his way through the crowd up towards the second step of the podium. And then to our double winner this weekend, car number 214, Christian Olsen. Well done, Christian. Just heard from Christian down in the pit lane as he takes the top step of the podium after receiving congratulations from the second and third place drivers. And Steph will step forward to offer a handshake after already uh, Joe Colasacco has helped himself to his trophy. Steph gives it out to Adrian Language and then to Christian Olsen. Two huge silver trophies for Christian Olsen this weekend and they hold their trophies up for the cameras on their respective steps of the podium and then get together on the top step of the podium for the tight shot of all three of them with their silverware, their spoils of victory for race 13 of the Silverstone Classic weekend and two fantastic classic Formula 3 races we've enjoyed this weekend. That's the scene from the podium. We've heard from Christian Olsen with Andrew down in the pit lane and that concludes our podium for race 13, the HSCC Classic Formula 3.